Hi everyone, welcome to learning ASP.NET Core. This is Madan. Today we are going to talk about simple three steps that can improve, that can help to improve uh, the query performance of Entity Framework Core. So this is the project that we created in our earliest demo about, uh, in our previous demo about uh, lazy loading. So in that project, I have made only very minor changes here. So in the model, I have in the sensor class, I have added a field called created it and added assigned our default value of date time dot now and i have generated the migration and updated the database uh, and uh, other thing is uh, in the views of the uh, i have created the index view in the home and uh, here i have passed the list of the sensor and then displayed that list into the table here and i have printed the one variable that is coming from the view back dot time taken and this view back dot time taken is empty now so if we refresh if we see our application then it looks like this so we are just picking up from our previous demo about lazy loading so if you have not uh, gone through that video then i highly recommend you to go through that video so the three steps that we are going to talk about to improve the query performance are as here are given as the first number is uh, we need to disable a uh, lazy loading so we already talked about what problem lazy loading brings in our application and uh, we should very wisely use lazy loading. So we need to disable lazy loading that highly improves the performance of our query. And the second step is that we need to load selected columns only. Selected columns here. So in this query, uh, in this view I am displaying the sensor name and sensor type but if we look into our queries then it is loading id created at sensor name and sensor type so it is loading other columns as well so this doesn't matter for the small table but if the table have large numbers of columns let's say 50 or 100 then uh, that matters so we need to uh, load the columns selectively so in this case uh, we can only load sensor name sensor type and id and we can leave created it so this is the second step and the third step is that the uh, disable query tracking by default entity framework core tracks all the queries whenever it fetches the data from the database or saves the new record then it tracks uh, all the way um, uh, all the information so that uh, if we make uh, any changes in the future then uh, that changes will get detected by the entity framework core but in the context of the disconnected application like uh, web based application we don't really need to enable query tracking so we can disable query tracking and that greatly helps us to improve the query performance so these are the three steps so let's uh, yeah, we already talked about the lazy loading in the previous demo and let's talk about loading how we can load selected columns so in order to lo load the selected columns what we can do is uh, I'm going to write another query here sensors equal to context dot sensors dot now we can select the queries that we want to load here so new sensor and then let's select the only field so what we need is we need an ID and uh, so I mistake here s goes to s dot id and then we need a sensor name sensor name equal to s dot sensor name and then we need a sensor type sensor type equal to s dot sensor type so these are the three fields that we need uh, for this view so we don't need to display the or uh, fetch the created at column from the database so I'm going to convert this into a list and uh, let's see our application has started or not let's restart it so it is starting up and uh, let's uh, refresh and uh, note that in the previous query we are loading all the columns from the database table but in this uh, step we are only going to load sensor name sensor type and the id here so i'm going to refresh and we got the same result here but if we see our query looks like entity framework does not uh, log our query here so let's refresh it again let's and uh, i stop the server and we can see the query here it should log without stopping the server but 
uh, from here we can see what we can see is that it has loaded only id sensor name and sensor type so we have not loaded the created at column so in this way we can selectively load the columns uh, the columns that we only need uh, in our views and uh, for the large tables tables with the uh, large number of columns this can greatly help us to improve the performance of our query here and the other thing is that we can disable the query tracking so that it improves our query performance so in order to disable the query tracking in the application db context we have the constructor and here the change tracker api is available here and it has a query tracking behavior enum and from this query tracking behavior enum we can select no tracking and uh, now if we run our project it will give us the same result but uh, uh, there is a difference in time that is uh, needed to fetch the data from the database so uh, let's refresh and then we get the same result and we get the same query and we are loading only the three columns here so now let's check the time let's calculate the time how much time each query takes so in order to calculate the time uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the stopwatch stopwatch equal to new stopwatch and then let's start the stopwatch just before we fire our query start method and then once we finished querying the database we are going to stop the stopwatch stopwatch dot stop and uh, what we can do is we can do time elapsed ELLAPSD elapsed equal to we have a stopwatch dot we can get elapsed here time elapsed and now we can pass the real time here time elapsed dot total seconds and let's add a string here saying seconds so let's save this and uh, let's start our server So it is starting up and then let's test the time taken to load the data by doing context.sensor.to list that is without uh, without uh, let's disable the change tracking first and let's test the time that takes uh, to fetch the data from the database by enabling the query tracking so we are commenting out this line that means by default entity framework core has enabled query tracking and now uh, I'm going to comment this line and let's check the time for this query. So this is the query that we are going to pass to the database by the query tracking uh, enabled and then let's restart the server. And then let's refresh it. And now it took 2.1618 second uh, without disabling the uh, query tracking behavior now let's enable let's disable the query tracking and we are going to run the same query here and uh, i'm going to stop the server and then start it again so that we get the actual time taken to load the data so the first method was by default with uh, the query tracking enabled now we are going to try with query tracking disabled here so it took 2.16 second and then let's refresh it and then once we disable the query tracking and it took only 1.198 seconds so this is a significant amount of the times and this uh, greatly helps us to improve the performance of our query and uh, so in this way we can disable the lazy loading we can load only the selected columns so if we uh, check the time for this query in this application in this demo then uh, we only have the four columns then so that we might not see the uh, actual time difference but for the table having large number of columns this significantly improves the performance of our query and the third step is we can disable the query tracking and once we disable the query tracking entity framework code doesn't uh, initiate the process of tracking uh, all the data changes that are changed in our application so this also uh, greatly helps us to improve the performance of our query so if we follow these three steps then uh, we are good to go with entity framework core 
and uh, use its uh, power so this is it for now friends and uh, if you like this video then please don't forget to share and subscribe thanks for watching and have a great day